everyone, how's it going? So today I want to make a video talking all about how you can adjust to the university workload because if you're one of the people who have started university this year or at any point, I guess, um, you can sort of relate to the fact that the workload just hits you like a train when you first get there. And I know that this isn't the case for everybody, obviously courses differ, but I personally found this to be the case with me when I started biomedical sciences a few years ago. Now before I get into the tips, I want to tell you the story that inspired this video. A week or so ago, I met up with a childhood friend of mine. And when I say childhood friend, I mean that literally the last time I saw him, he was like, yay big, and I was only like, yay big. But because we have family friends and our parents know each other, um, my mum told me that he is studying medicine in London at St George's and I was like, oh my god, we have to meet up for a catch up. So we met up and obviously we were talking about medicine as he's studying it now and I want to study it at some point. Um, and he brought up the fact that the workload is just humongous and you can't really escape from it. And this did take me back to my own days and I started thinking that, gosh, I felt a similar way when I started my degree. So I thought it would be a really good idea for me to kind of reflect back on my own experiences and try and give you guys who are starting or may have already started some, I guess, tips and advice on how to cope and how to not get buried and, you know, just work through things effectively. Now the first and the biggest piece of advice I have for you is just keep up with the work and do everything that needs to be done as soon as you're given it. See, one of the biggest differences with university is that everything is self-driven and you have to be self-motivated and self-disciplined and plan your day. Unlike school where you usually have a teacher or a tutor or somebody chasing you up for a piece of work, it's not like that in university. If you just so happen to miss the deadline, then that's on you. And the other thing is that because university work just keeps rolling and rolling, it's so easy to fall behind. Something that happened to me when I first started university is that at first, so in my first, like, let's say 10 lectures, I would be on top of everything, I would make the notes as soon as the lecture was finished, and that was that, the work was done. But then as I got a bit, little bit lax and a little bit comfortable, I would think to myself, well, I'm going out tonight and I'm probably going to be hungover tomorrow. So how about I just leave these four lectures to do over the weekend? And what would happen is that because four lectures is quite a lot to do in a weekend, I would do two of them and then those two would roll over to the next week where I have new lectures. And you see where I'm going with this. I think a really good way to discipline yourself is plan something fun that you want to do and tell yourself that unless you finish today's lectures or today's piece of work, then you're not going to go and do that thing. It might mean that you may end up being 20 minutes, half an hour or an hour late to that party that you want to go to, but trust me, it will help you later on. The second point is that just because you're working all of the time, it doesn't mean you're getting things done. Oh, again, this, I wish someone had said this to me when I had just started. I used to be the most inefficient learner ever. I would spend hours and hours in the library, I would spend hours and hours making notes, and at the end of it, I didn't really feel like the amount of work I put in correlated with the outcome and what I actually learned. And the issue with that is that, yes, university is there to teach you things and to help you get a good degree, but you also need to have fun, you also need to relax, you also need to grow as a person and make friends. And this is one of the biggest mistakes I made. I remember when I first started, I joined a bunch of societies from sports to debate to, I guess, health-based stuff. And I was so excited to go to all of these. But then I would be like, oh, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. When in reality, I think, you know, everybody has the same 24 hours in a day. And if other people are managing to do that, it's probably because they are finding more efficient ways to get the work done so they can focus on everything else, which is equally important, I should add. And I have talked about efficient studying techniques in other videos, so I will link them below. But just to give you a little bit of practical advice in this video, my biggest, biggest tip for studying is do interval studying. So instead of sitting there for four hours and, you know, kind of twiddling your thumbs and like playing on your phone and then like just sitting idly for like at least half of it, 
the best way to study, I think, is to set a timer on your phone um, and choose a time on what suits you. But personally, what I do is I set my timer for 50 minutes. I work solidly for 50 minutes. And then I give myself maybe 10 to 15 minutes break, probably 10. In that time, I might get a glass of water, I might check my phone, I might just get, around, get up and walk around a bit, and then another 15 minutes and the cycle repeats. And I find that when I do that, I'm way more efficient. Number three. Oh my god, another mistake I used to make. Use your lecture time efficiently. My god, by literally a couple of months into my degree, and unfortunately this is something that carried on all the way through, in the first couple of months I would be really motivated in the lectures, I would sit and listen and I would like do my best to make notes, but the more I felt, <coughs> excuse me, the more I fell behind and the work kind of piled up, the less I was able to actually sit and listen in lectures because all I was thinking about is going home and making notes for the lectures that I was behind on. A lot of the times I would just show up to the lectures and just sit there idly because I had to and because I had to sign my name to say I attended. And I think an issue that a lot of people have is that they do tend to lose focus in these lectures. But don't worry, once again, I have a useful practical tip. So this took me a while to figure out because I have a short attention span when it means I have to sit still and do nothing. I'm very much my god, I just <laughs> hit my lap. I'm, I'm very much an on-the-go person and I struggle to sit still for a long period of time, so I naturally struggled with lectures. But what I found was that instead of trying to keep up with everything during the lecture, which can be difficult when you're getting a barrage of new information thrown your way, I found it really useful to look through my lecture notes the night before when they, they were put on the system and have a quick read and that would make me familiar with what I was about to be taught in more detail the next day and because some of the things that I had read were familiar to me during the lecture when I would hear something I'd be like oh oh yeah I, I remember reading that or oh yeah yeah I, I know the picture that he's referring to and that helps me stay focused a lot more and if you want a more detailed video talking about how to get the most out of your lectures and how to take good notes and focus I have a video for that linked below too Number four is adjust for your learning style. The learning style that you may use in school is completely different to one that you may use at university. And obviously as you grow and as you change and as the complexity of the things you learn gets more difficult, um, I think it's really important to evaluate yourself and understand what helps you and what sort of learning style you have and suits you and will help you get the most out of your study material. I'm not going to go into further detail because once again I've already made a video about this but in the video that I will link below you can go ahead and find out what kind of learner you are, whether you're auditory or whether you're visual, whether you are a social learner, whether you are like a, like a logical learner and some techniques that you can apply based on whatever your style is. Just remember, there is not, there is no one golden bullet method of studying and it is not like a cookie cutter um, kind of method. You just have to do a little bit of extra homework and find exactly what suits you. Now, number five is quite similar to number four, but instead of figuring out what learning style suits you, number five talks about finding out what study method suits you. And again, the video that I mentioned will have both of these um, side by side, so it makes everything easy to kind of digest in one video. But essentially, number five is to find out what works for you. So some people take a hell of a lot of notes and they don't end up being that efficient for them, I'm one of those people, um, whereas some people notes is fantastic and it works for them really well. Other people might find it useful to plaster notes and pictures all over the bedroom wall, whereas somebody else might not benefit from that much at all. So try and figure out what best study method is for you. And I really hope that some of the resources that I'm going to leave below will help you figure all of these things out because I think the sooner you find these out, the sooner you can keep up and catch up and become more efficient and just save yourself a lot of hassle. Ask me how I know. Now, the next 
piece of advice is a little bit controversial, so by all means you should be the judge and you can decide whether this may or may not work for you. I genuinely think that when it comes to university, unlike A-levels perhaps, you don't need to know everything in full detail. Now some people disagree and say that you should try and learn as much of what the lecturers teach you and try and have a good overview of everything, which I do agree with, but I do also think that sometimes it's important to triage what you think is important and if you focus on your strengths and not avoid your weaknesses but focus less on your weaknesses then that might give you an advantage to a sense especially when the amount of information is so much. So to give you an example, let's say you have six different lecture topics or six different modules in my opinion, I think it's better to be like an expert in two of them, know two of them pretty well and have a basic understanding of the other two. I think this is especially useful because otherwise if you try and tackle all of them at once and try and get a level, you will probably get a mediocre level of understanding for all of them. But if you focus on certain ones, then you have a better chance of doing really well on some of them and doing quite well on the others. And hopefully that will average out to a pretty high score. But as I said, that's quite controversial. So you be the judge. And there we have it. They were all of my pieces of advice. Please like and subscribe to this video if you enjoyed it. And also, I know that I've probably missed a bunch of things out. So if you have any advice on how you can adjust to the workload and some tips and tricks on how to be efficient and keep on top of everything, then leave everything below. Oh, sorry, leave your comments below and we can have a chat downstairs. All right, my lovelies, I'm going to head off, but I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care and I will see you next time.